Hi, welcome to Over 50 and Flourishing and happy Monday to you. Our guest today is Lori Gerber. She is the founder of Lori Gerber Coaching Incorporated. She is a powerhouse in the world of coaching and personal development. And she's been featured on a ton of podcasts. You've probably heard her radio shows as well. Major television networks, including The Today Show, Dr. Phil, MTV, and A&E. With a TEDx talk under her belt and a wealth of experience as a love expert for platforms like Match, Zeusk, and JDate, she brings a really unique perspective to the table. She has been presenting to and coaching individuals, couples, and groups for years now. So whether you're looking to improve your romantic relationships, deepen your connections with others, or simply live a more authentic life, Lori Gerber is here to guide us on that journey. So excited. One of today's sponsors is Jenny Kane, a brand that I talk about all the time. I absolutely love their classic pieces. They're a California brand, simplistic quality beautiful no-brainer outfits from sweaters to pants, jeans, dresses. It is so easy to get dressed when you have some classic Jenny Kane pieces in your closet. Their sweaters, kind of the quintessential must-have item, and that's where you can find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I. K-A-Y-N-E dot com promo code Dominique. Like getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Y'all know how much I love Honey Love and there is a good reason for it. Nothing worse than bras and shapewear that absolutely pinch and bind. And yeah, they may do the trick, but they make you feel miserable and you cannot wait until the end of the day to get that stuff off and you see the marks and you feel the pain. Why? Why suffer like that? It's wonderful to have bras and shapewear that support and lift without the bind and breathable fabric as well. You know, their most popular bra is the crossover bra, and it really is my go-to. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market. Save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they're going to ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to honey love because you deserve it. All right, so let's catch our breath and talk about the air that we breathe. Did you know Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths a day? The indoor air that we breathe is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, up to 100 times more polluted, according to the EPA. So what's the solution here? Well, introducing an air purifier that captured the attention of major media outlets across the country. It's called Air Doctor. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants, so your lungs don't have to. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day Breathe Easy money-back guarantee, so if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund minus shipping. Head to airdoctorpro.com, use promo code OVER50, and you'll receive up to $300 off air purifiers. Exclusive to podcast customers, you'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Lock this special offer by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com and use promo code OVER50. Lori, it is so good to have you with me today on Over 50 and Flourishing. You know, I, 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 for some reason, I must like the subject of dating. And I think it's not just me, but I think women in general in this age group, it is such a hot conversation topic. And you know, I've had Evan Mark Katz on the platform twice now. I am so excited to have you. I have seen you on a lot of these national outlets that we listed prior to you coming on. Lady, you're a rock star in this field. Thank you. It is really a fun topic because everyone, if they don't care about it, they should. It's right. It's like the most important thing, I think. I mean, it's wonderful to leave a legacy and do your career. I think mm -hmm. that's neck and neck. But if you do not have love in your life, you can kind of feel it missing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just trying to find new love in midlife, but also existing love, nurturing relationships, you know, how to make love work. And I, you know, I don't even know where to start with you because there's so much to talk about. There, there aren't a lot of top, there are a lot of topics, but we're going to hit the exact right ones, I'm sure. 
Oh, I know we will. I know we will. Um, you know, I hear from women all the time who are hitting the reset button in midlife and a lot of relationships, as I've discussed before, get examined and re-examined. Oftentimes there is big shifting that takes place, um, big decisions that are being made that can be very difficult. Um, some relationships are salvageable, some aren't, and a lot of women are starting over in this season of life. So let's sort of address her at that point and at that juncture. And it can be a very scary, daunting place. You know, there's that old stereotype, which I don't know if it's a stereotype, but you know, men our age are oftentimes looking for much younger women and, and the dating pool just seems to be very small. So let's just talk about being in this new space and place in this stage of life. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to say is the dating pool is billions of people. Okay, so I, I do not subscribe to the theory that the dating pool is small. I do mm -hmm. subscribe to the theory that men tend to like women who accept them and appreciate and adore them. And sometimes less experienced women are more likely to do that. So uh -huh. I don't subscribe to that theory. <laughs> um, but it is in no way a good reason or excuse for a woman to come out of the dating game if she wants to find love over 50. Right. That's, you know what? Lori, too, I think that a lot of women maybe think that the dating pool is small because they think about their community. And maybe it's because you've got a broader perspective. You're, you're bringing, it's like, well, wait a second. You don't have to just look in your community or, or limit your parameters to such a small sector or feel like you know everybody and nobody fits the bill. I mean, you're thinking big picture. And how do you go about that? And that, that's what we do. We have tunnel vision. We're like, oh, it's cloudy today. Well, is it cloudy where you are? No. Right? Mm. <laughs> so it's that's not, true. Not universally true what you think. So I really try to get women to exactly what you said, widen their view. And from my perspective, it's literally infinite. I have a great friend. I don't know. She's in her mid fifties now, but a few years ago, she met her true love, her soulmate, her second husband, where? Mm -hmm. On the New York city street, literally on the street. Okay. And stop it. Of course you can. Of course you can meet your person on the street. And so if the street is available, if your friends' parties are available, if right. life cycle events are available, if clubs are available, if your community center is available, if sports activity, I mean, it is truly, literally endless mm -hmm. where you meet your person and there are billions of people and your age criteria are probably wrong and your height criteria are probably wrong and huh. your uh, attractiveness <laughs> and status and education, like all your criteria are making it seem like there's mm -hmm. only three. Well, plus you're only looking at your social circle, right? You already tried them, right? You already tried them. So I, I'm forever convincing women to open their eyes, open their parameters and stop talking nonsense to themselves. Cause it is literally nonsense to go. There's no men in my area. That's not okay. I am cracking up because, and I'm going to, I'm going to bring her on eventually, but Courtney is sitting over here. Everybody knows Courtney is my director of marketing and social media. She produces podcast. She is a single, single mingle. Yeah. And I, let, okay. The things that you just listed, first of all, her list scares me because he's got to look a certain way and be a certain height and kind of this and that and, and, and meet. I right not find them. So if you are busy trying to just have flings you hear and this? with your friends, that's a perfect strategy. <laughs> Truly. It's, it's not. And I think, I do think um, Evan Katz said this, but I, what predicts success in a relationship is not those things. That is not what predicts success or happiness in a relationship. Mm. You know what the single biggest predictor of happiness in a relationship is? What? Because I just learned this in the past year. You being happy before you get into the relationship. Ah, yes. Right? Two people yep. happy in their own lives, that predicts their happiness. It's not religion. It's not height. It's not race. It's not eye color, hair color, weight. It's not any of the things you think. Those are nice to think about and mm -hmm. care about. And there might be certain things. Like if you're really athletic, you want someone to do athletics with you, yes. maybe. But you don't even have to have someone do athletics with you. Mm -hmm. then most people are all wrong. And really what our hoo-ha needs to be turned on is much more about swagger, much more about how we're treated, much more about mm -hmm. confidence, much more about a je ne sais quoi than mm -hmm. it is about that long list of criteria, whether it be education and status or money or, or, or attractiveness features. And let me also just say, we live in a virtual world now and we had COVID and everybody worked from home and everybody can work from anywhere now. It's just the fact. So right. even if you're like, there's no men in my area, you know, I know people in rural Montana and you know, mm -hmm. there's a limited number, like literally. Yes. 
Yeah, you know, but I don't care. Some if you meet the love of your life, they're moving or you're moving. So, so shut up. <laughs> So you're okay. So you're saying you're you're kind of falling along the lines of what Evan Marquette said, which is you've got to be on dating apps in order to open up and broaden that perspective. Are you basically a proponent as well? I'm obviously, if you want to buy avocados, you have to go to the store. Yeah, <laughs> you got to go touch some avocados. Sure, and that's what you squeeze avocado. them. Yeah, you got to squeeze them and see if they. <laughs> so absolutely, I want people on dating sites. Absolutely, you got to okay. be in the to win the game. It's not that you have to meet them on the dating site. It's that you have mm. to send the message to yourself and to the world. I'm available. I'm looking. I want to go, you know, again, you can, your friend could give you a hand-me-down dress, but if you need a dress for the ball, go to the store where they're selling dresses and don't be mm. offended that you have to look through a thousand dresses mm. to pick 10, to try on five, to like two, to take home one. Good point. All right. So court, my question, are you happy? Cause she wants to know that first. Are you happy? I do. Okay. So Courtney says she's happy. So we've started with the first check. Okay. Now what do we do about this list of hers or this list of any woman's where you, where you have this, this criteria? Is she happy with her list? Is she getting enough prospects that fit her list? Are you getting enough prospects? Yeah. Just not working out. Uh, Great. Then there's nothing wrong with her list. If she's getting plenty of prospects, it's something different. Okay. Something's not working out. Is it not working out for them or is it not working out for her? Come over here. (laughs) Come over here. No, really, because uh, look, it's important. Yeah, it's important to have this conversation. She's on the apps. I'm not. So I and she's got her list and and what? So he's got to be like six foot four, almost looking like a no, not six four, just like I'm five four. Being taller than me is not a huge issue that I have, but just preferably over six feet. I like to think I have my life together. So just I'd assume that he needs to have his life together. Just have like a job and be okay, you know. So far, so far, I'm only concerned about the height, but that's, but you're saying you're getting enough prospects. So tell me what's not working. What's the deal? I feel like I just go out and I'll I'll go out on dates. I feel like I can talk to anybody. I'll talk to a tree if I have to. That's not the problem. (laughs) But I don't know. I just feel like I keep going out on dates and then I just don't feel a huge spark of any kind. Like I leave there and I'm like, he was cool. And we had good conversation. I'll stay for Mm -hmm. a couple hours and chat. I just don't really have like a huge urge Mm -hmm. to see them again, which I feel very grateful that they want to see me, which is super nice and great. But I'm just like, eh, I just didn't think anything was there. Okay. So in the methodology I teach, there is the head, the heart, and the hoo-ha. The head Mm -hmm. cares about, are they educated? Do they live in my town? Mm -hmm. Do they have the amount of time? Are they actually available? Do they show up? You know, that that's head. It's just practicality. Do we want, do, do I respect the career? You know, things like that. The heart wants to feel adored and loved and connected and sense of humor and, uh, you know, equality, if that's important to you, whatever's important to how you feel. Mm-hmm. Then the hoo-ha needs to be turned on. The hoo-ha has to be like, oh, I want to see him again. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd like to kiss him. Oh, I'd like to look at that face forever. Okay. Right. It does not sound like your hoo-ha is getting what it needs. So even though you have those criteria of height, et cetera, you do not have the criteria that turns on your hoo-ha. <laughs> Did you ever think we'd be going there? <laughs> not on this podcast. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> so you're letting in good, sensible choices for your head. Yeah. And yeah. The kind people that you feel friend- like a friendship almost. Yeah. With, but you're not turned on. And that's a very common thing that women do. Especially okay, but let let me interject because she has connected with somebody who turned on the hoo ha, but was <laughs> totally disrespectful in many other ways, and then it, it was allowed to continue. And I was like, "What are you doing?" Because oh, hoo ha goes up, heart goes down. Uh-huh. So, not, and this is you're making my point so beautifully, both of you ladies. <laughs> the, the three H's: the head, the heart, and the hoo ha compete like siblings. Mm. They each think they're entitled to the full vote. They each think they're in charge and they should get to choose what movie we watch tonight. They fight with each other. They try to dominate each other. They get jealous. It's a whole competition vibe, right? So you're like, well, I can either have heart or hoo-ha, but not both. You have that theory probably based on something from your lineage or your family or even Mm. your past could Mm. be telling you that that's how it is. It's not how it is. You can have all three. Most people don't even try. They don't even look. They don't even believe in it. They think it's a leprechaun to believe in all three. But, and again, you're not even trying, right? You're willing to sell out on your hoo-ha for your heart. You're willing to sell out on your heart for your hoo-ha. And what I'm trying to say is all three get an equal vote and it's a hundred percent vote. It's got to be eight out of 10 on head, eight Mm -hmm. out of 10 on heart, 
eight out of 10 on hoo-ha. And I'm telling you people, nobody gets this right because nobody has a parent example that did it. Like one, it's like one in 10,000 of a parent example that did that because right. the generation above us, they weren't even, they were all head. Yeah, that's they true. Lucky. They got heart. Most of them sold out on hoo-ha. And if they did hoo-ha, the whole thing was a disaster. If one is like screaming out above the other one, mm-hmm. do you think that there's room, you know, if maybe the hoo-ha one is not, not you know, there. first date, not there, would you say go on the second date and see if it happens? Or if it's not there, all, then... You're asking all the right questions. These are all the questions <laughs> that we want to know. So, <laughs> that you're here. So, first of all, all three get a vote. I have my daters have a chart. It's very nerdy. You're literally filling out your criteria. You have your criteria, five or 10, five to seven things, not 10. And it's either green. Yes. Red. No. Yellow. I don't know yet. I'll find out by the third date. Okay. So you're, you're studying and caring for the first three dates. You're not going on a fourth or fifth date, getting invested in someone who's not going to turn out. So, but the answer is if hoo-ha, and you know what? Evan said this so brilliantly, right? If the hoo-ha is below a six, they don't get another date. Mm, okay. You can you can try to get it to a seven, eight, nine by kissing, by going to a new environment, by giving him a makeover, by telling him what you don't like about. Like there are lots of fun tactics you can do with a guy to get him from a six to an eight. He has to be at an eight by the end of date three, or that's a no. That's abort the mission. But if he's below a six, he doesn't even get off the video date. And don't waste his time, and don't waste your time. Yeah, yeah. I just I wonder if. It, and I won't just single out you. I would say a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Too late. <laughs> Too late. You're, you're right. I threw you into the grease pit. But I really, really want you to find love. So I, I just wonder if we eliminate potential candidates to be able to check all three of these boxes in equal form simply because we have this list of criteria that we think is so important but really isn't. And how do we change that list? So again, before. You just made me skip ahead to the why we have to listen to all three ages. But the first thing you have to do is make the real list. And most yeah. people do not have the right list. Mm-hmm. To, to the point I was making before, 6'4 is not what's going to make you happy with someone. It's a, That's like a stand-in. Mm-hmm. That's your guess at what the code is for what's going to turn on your hoo-ha. That's not what actually ends up turning on your hoo-ha. <laughs> so all had experiences where you were attracted to someone and they became unattractive or you were not attracted and they became attracted. Mm-hmm. And it, their height didn't change, right? Nor did their penis size change, nor did their, sometimes their hair color change, but even that is not. <laughs> so, I mean, my silly example is I thought I needed to marry a Jewish guy because, mm-hmm. it, you know, when I was growing up, it was like still a thing, right? Still, right. Still like you marry in your religion, right? That's like, what that's, good Jewish girls do. Right. So that was still a thing in my day mm-hmm. and I bought it. And then I cared about certain things I had in my upbringing. I wanted them for my children. So I was like, boom needs to be a Jewish guy. By the way, I married the son of a Presbyterian minister who converted to Judaism without me asking. Just saying. The truth was not that I needed a Jewish guy. The truth was I wanted to raise my kids with my holidays. That's Mm -hmm. it. I married a a Christian who who was fine to celebrate Passover. Right, right. Passover, right? Like he he did. So really I needed, you know, someone who wanted to parent the way I wanted to, someone with similar values, someone who mm-hmm. would let me lead the way on my children's spirituality. I needed someone who was going to be in New York City, honest to God. I thought I was, I thought blonde hair, blue eyed. When I was growing up, that mm-hmm. was what you look for, blonde hair, blue eyed. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Turns out I need a strong chest. That I need a strong, <laughs> strong chest. Is that what you said? <laughs> it's not at least something to do with my dad, right? So okay. What you need is not what the movies told you, is not mm. what your friends need, is not what you think you need as the stand-in for what you actually need. So I have to work with women to get these lists pared down mm. to the real five or six things. And then I keep going, why do you care about that? Why do you care about that? Why do you care about, you know, they say the craziest things. He has to be this educated. He has to have that much kind of money. Why? Oh, because I want to travel to these places and I want him to come with me. Why? I just love traveling mm. with someone else. Great. Make the criteria he loves to travel to places and can travel with me. Don't make the criteria he needs to make a salary of $200,000 a year. What if he's Mm -hmm. an investor? What if he's just wealthy? What if he has a deal with the airline? (laughs) Like, you know, like you're you're just ruling out all the people who could be good for you because you think you know the answer to how it's supposed to look. And you were taught these codes, like this code means that, called dark and handsome. 
NBA, X amount of money. It's just not true. It doesn't play out that way on the court. What plays out on the court with happy couples is it's about very different things than that. Right. You know, it's interesting. There's, there's such a generational difference. I'm not, I'm not on it. I don't do a dating app. You know, I believe in the organic, just kind of let it happen naturally type thing. And, um, and she's doing, she's doing the apps and, you know, I think generation generationally, the difference is, is that I'm used to conversations and things, you know, before you connect and, and they're like, yeah, let's just meet up. And, and the first conversation is when they first see each other. So, I mean, talk about just the difference in, in that. They have time to waste. <laughs> they must not have children yet. <laughs> Me? I, I always tell her, like, talk to him first, talk to him before you see him, because you can weed out a lot in a phone conversation. Well, Again, it's such a good point. Dating fatigue can set in much younger now because of the amount of inefficiency of how you're doing it. Yeah. But that's why I said first, are you happy? If you're happy, if you're having fun, if you love shopping, enjoy shopping. If you want to try mm -hmm. everything on, try everything on. If you're happy, I'm happy. But the minute you start to go, mm, I don't like the weather. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> tiring it's boring it's what i don't these, there's no good guy like as soon as you start to develop bad theories you're to blame right you're not shopping mm -hmm. properly and so that's when you need to start to do a phone call first do a video date first and then anyone who isn't just trying to have sex with you will be happy to have a video date because they want to be attracted to they want to make sure there's chemistry too and so they're gonna have a 10 minute video date with you to see if there's chemistry and you literally are gonna say let's just hop on a 10 minute in app video chat and see if there's mm -hmm. chemistry. not even you're not trying to trick anyone. I mm -hmm. want to see what all you really are. I want to see what you really look like. I want to see what's no. in your background. I want to show you what I look like. I want you to see how big my boobs are for real. And, <laughs> and, and <laughs> she'll get she'll ten out of ten. She'll get dates. <laughs> she, that, that. <laughs> it's nice when you know a video date's gonna work to your advantage. And it, to know you can weed out duds because eventually you will get tired if you want to <laughs> duds or people who just want to sleep with you that you have to realize <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> oh, this is so good. You have no idea how good this is. I love this. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Wow, there is so much to talk about. Lori Gerber, you are awesome. You are, <laughs> you're killing me in the best of ways. We'll be back right after this. So excited. One of today's sponsors is Jenny Kane, a brand that I talk about all the time. I absolutely love their classic pieces. They're a California brand, simplistic quality, beautiful, no brainer outfits from sweaters to pants, jeans, dresses. It is so easy to get dressed when you have some classic Jenny Kane pieces in your closet. They're sweaters, kind of the quintessential must-have item. Let me talk about the oversized cotton fisherman and the cotton cocoon. They're kind of those perfect everyday pieces as we now transition into spring. It's getting a little bit warmer, so these are fabrics that can take you through kind of from day to night. I get compliments all the time. Anytime I wear a Jenny Kane sweater, people are just saying, hey, that's beautiful. Where'd you get it? And I'm so excited to say it's Jenny Kane. And that's where you can find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com promo code Dominique. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Y'all know how much I love Honey Love and there is a good reason for it. Nothing worse than bras and shapewear that absolutely pinch and bind. And yeah, they may do the trick, but they make you feel miserable. And you cannot wait until the end of the day to get that stuff off and you see the marks and you feel the pain. Why? Why suffer like that? It's wonderful to have bras and shapewear that support and lift without the bind and breathable fabric as well. You know, their most popular bra is the crossover bra, and it really is my go-to. It gives the support of a traditional bra, but without any of that pinching underwire. Plus, there's really pretty mesh detailing that adds just a touch of sexy, because who says support can't be? Treat yourself to the best bras on the market. Save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they're going to ask where you heard about them. 
please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to honey love because you deserve it. Welcome back, everybody. We are having a spirited and fruitful conversation with Lori Gerber, founder of Lori Gerber Coaching Inc. Lori, people can find you online. Let's talk about that first as we dive into a ton of questions. Yeah, LoriGerber.com is the best. We've got the Are You Ready to Date Like You Mean It quiz. Mm-hmm. We're toward over 50, although it's it's a fruitful conversation for anyone. Uh, you know, a masterclass you can watch, all kinds of fun, free ways to interact and learn more about these tools. Fantastic. So we, poor Courtney, we, we dragged her into the conversation. She's 28 and in the dating scene and, and trying to figure it out. But, you know, I really appreciate what you just mentioned to me. And as we were kind of joking about her list and criteria, you were saying this isn't just a 28 year old thing. Women in midlife are dealing with the, the very same issues. Yeah. And my favorite mm-hmm. woman is the woman who's finally gotten free of her mm-hmm. first marriage or even her second marriage and is finally free of her kids and is finally for the first time in 20 in the 2020s going well what about me Mm. because if she's over 50 in the 2020s it means she was raised in a time when she was not trained to ask that question she either went full hog into her career raised a family or didn't and ignored her needs or she really was the sidekick to a man and served that man and served that family and served those kids and then this really is the first time she can look up and go, wait, what did I want? Like, what did I care about? What, who am I? Yeah. <laughs> you know. So yeah. that's my favorite age to help dating because also she's not under pressure to have a baby. She does not have to rush. So nothing needs to be sold out on. She can actually do that work on herself to get to know herself and what she wants and what she needs. Mm-hmm. She can take her time with men. She can date multiple men. She doesn't have to settle down with anybody. She doesn't have to run and have sex with anybody. She doesn't have to mm-hmm. pin anyone down. So she can do all of this right at the right pace for her learning mm-hmm. and pleasure. And yeah. so I love a woman over 50 dating again, but she has special challenges too. Like maybe she's never dated online or maybe she's never had to do a video date thanks to COVID. Everyone Mm -hmm. has to, they can text and they can do video. But if it wasn't for COVID, we'd really be completely out of our depth if we're just getting out of a marriage after 20 years or 30 years and don't literally don't have the skills. Yeah. And as as somebody who's been through marriage and then, you know, entered the dating pool, I mean, not every date is marriage material. And I think sometimes that's hard for women because you're so used to being a unit that as you're going through this process and and discovery, you know, people are always saying, well, is he marriage material? Well, he, he may not be. And that's okay. It really is like going to a lingerie store, going Mm -hmm. to a dress up vintage store, going to get your gown or going to your regular store for your regular clothes, right? Like there's, there's all different ways to have fun and it's not the same for every person. And you got to tell your truth about it. Certainly if you just got out of a long-term monogamous relationship, I think you should date around. I think you should see what's out there. I don't think you should look for marriage material. I think Mm -hmm. you should look for variety so you can learn and have fun. But women suck at that. They really do biologically want to, be with one person a lot of the times. Yeah. And so that I I have trouble getting women to do that for very long, but I really do encourage the freedom to do that. Do you find some women are shifting and maybe coming into the space saying, you know what? Maybe I I don't need to marry. Maybe I I want to find a life partner, but who says we have to have that that commitment. That's one of the beautiful things again about this particular time in history and this particular time in a woman's life is really many more are saying I don't need to I don't need to get married. Many still want that long-term monogamy, but Mm -hmm. no, they're not going to intertwine finances again. No, they're not going to make their children feel competitive with someone again. No, like they just want companionship. And that's very new. Uh, Another thing that's new is the concept of equality. Like That's not been around that long and it's still not really in, in a lot of places, but it is beginning to be more of a commonplace notion. Like, oh, we're going to be companions. We're going to be partners. We're going to be, each other's best friends who also have a sex life, not I'm going to serve your mission, which was mm-hmm. very much the archetype for a, a long time in, in at least in American history and in, in other cultures still is. So it's a very unique time to renegotiate all of the deals. And I know that we love to stereotype men as, you know, just looking for fun or the younger woman to admire and adore, but most men also want that, want the companionship, mm-hmm. 
the best friendship, want the partnership, want that one person they know they're going to get laid with and they don't have to worry because they're going to get laid and they don't have to hunt anymore. So just a huge number of men who want that. And that's where we need to keep our focus on if that's what we're looking for. Yeah, I, I find the beauty at this stage in life is the authenticity that comes with it. The knowledge from experience of being in relationships, learn, you know, I think we've all learned things about ourselves and we bring that knowledge and that wisdom to the equation and hopefully a very strong voice because you get a different quality experience that way, don't you? A hundred percent. And that's such a good, positive point to bring out. You know, everybody wants to focus on I'm tired. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I can't, I can't well, we get all are. more time. But <laughs> right. on the other hand, everything you've been through has made this beautiful soul that you are and, and all of it has served you for what's coming next. So that's yeah. an excellent point. Good, good, good. Okay. I want to go through your punch list because you've had so many cool things to talk about. Um, you say, are you ready to date like you mean it? What do you mean by that? Okay. So some people get into dating before they should. Some people wait on the sidelines forever. Like they're just mm -hmm. too chicken and they're just not ready. Like they literally, I had a woman ask me just today, you know, well, how do I tell them I'm not interested? And that's a really, I used to lead these workshops at match. And it was one of the most common, frequently asked questions, but how do I tell them? And that's like such a basic thing. It's like saying, how do I put the dress back on the rack? Like, oh, you bring it out of the dressing room and you put it. You do it. <laughs> are paralyzed and you're like, I don't know how to do that. So I, mm. I'm a bitch if I do that, or I'm a mm -hmm. bad person if I do that, or I just don't literally have the words. How are you going to go shopping? How are you going to go on a date? You're not. You're going to sit on the sidelines. So you're not ready yet until you have literal tactics. You need a, I call it a grace and wisdom sandwich. It's been lovely to meet you. You seem like a fabulous person. I just don't feel like it's a romantic match. It's not ringing those bells for me. I wish you the best of luck. Mm -hmm. I, I Things are going to happen. I'd be happy to introduce you to a friend if I ever see someone fit. So it's mm -hmm. a kindness, a truth, and a kindness, just like in your professional life. Yeah. And you need your canned responses, right? Like you need your you, you need your canned responses. Just like if you were trying to be efficient at work, you wouldn't rewrite the same email over and over again. You'd have your standard template and you'd reuse it. So it is the same thing with dating to make it more efficient and less fatiguing. Um, I don't think I'm on your original question anymore. Oh, dang, oh like, okay. Yeah. So you, right? I was like, we went off on a canned response tangent, but you <laughs> need your canned responses. You need your literal strategic prep, mm -hmm. but you also do need to deal with some stuff from your past. You do mm -hmm. need to know what the pitfalls of your lineage are. You do need to know what your patterns were in your past relationship. Yes. And again, I'm working with 50, women in their fifties and sixties and they're like, my past relationships, there were like seven before I married that guy and then one for 20 years. Mm -hmm. and, that, you know, and they really are confused about what those patterns might be. And so they're walking blind and they're going to make the same mistake again if they don't purposely correct it. Yeah, there's so much introspection that needs to take place. And, and I encourage women. I mean, I've been through it. It's, you know, it is a journey. It takes time. It may take, you know, some therapy and some conversations to understand the root of some things. But if you, if you go through that exercise, you really bring a different you to the equation the next time around which I think is so empowering. And it's like you were saying, use, use your voice. You know, you may have to tell somebody you're not the right fit for me, but can I just say that's empowering too, to be kind and respectful and truthful about what you want and what you don't want. Yeah. And so not only are you then increasing your self-confidence and self-respect, you're mm -hmm. cutting that guy loose and giving him honor and you're being contagious. Like the world wants mm. to be honest. We're just all agreed not to be. Right. So if you start the trend, I'm going to do it gracefully, but I'm going to do it. Then he's going to go, maybe I'll do that next time. The next time mm -hmm. I need to go somebody, maybe I'll tell them the truth. Right. And then slowly but surely we could create this culture where humans are actually thoughtful and kind about their matchmaking with each other and yes. don't make it such a drama. What a novel idea. Wow. Kindness and transparency and caring for one another and how they feel. Okay. Genius. You know, I'm a dreamer. I'm I mean, me too. Me too. Um, the next thing you say is obstacles to finding love and how to overcome them. What would you say are some of the biggest obstacles? And I, obviously, I think we've touched on some of it, which is probably overcoming some past pain and trauma and, and you know, maybe broken relationships. Right. I mean, what I have touched on some of them, and there are specific exercises I give people in my course where 
you know, you're going to deal with your past, you're going to deal with your lineage, you're going to deal with your relationship history, you're going to get everything very dialed and clear so you can speak about it articulately and own it and not make the same mistakes again. But one thing I didn't mention is something called the detox, the love detox. Mm -hmm. And that's very important, especially if you're, I was going to say, especially if you're newly divorced. But the truth is some people don't get over their addiction to that person even after a long time. Mm -hmm. Or some people actually have had many relationships, but there's that one that got away right? You, you know that concept? It's not true, mm -hmm. but people, a lot of people have that concept. So their heart is taken. I even had a client whose brother died when she was young and her heart was with her brother. Like, her, so if your heart is taken, you are not available for other people. You're not. And, and, and everyone knows it, right? Whether they know they know it or not, they know it because there is a world of energy out there and mm -hmm. you can tell when you're not available. So if you are not yet unattached from whoever or whatever you might be addicted to, you're not available. And so we do a, a love, obviously I want you to detox if you're, you know, on drugs or on alcohol, that's going to be that coaching. But right. if you are addicted to a person, there's a love detox. And it has a lot of the same characteristics as detoxing from any kind of addiction. That's you know, powerful, by the way. And that was such an interesting analogy about even just being emotionally torn from a past family member. How do you even acknowledge or recognize that you need to detox from something? The method that I teach has a lot of powerful written exercises that evoke what's unresolved, right? So that's the very mm -hmm. technical answer is how do you even know? The other way to answer that is like, well, do you keep failing? <laughs> like, Do you keep failing and you're beautiful and you're smart and you're capable and you're and everything's going great, well, then it's probably something from your past or from your lineage or both. Interesting. Interesting. What can, can you share some of those details of what a love detox looks like yeah. and how long it even takes? Yeah. Different people take different lengths of time. I would say it is mainly to do with how long the relationship was, right? Shorter mm -hmm. relationships should take shorter time to detox. Mm -hmm. um, again, it has very similar features to a detox from a substance. You need to admit you have a problem. Mm. You need to remove your triggers. Don't go to the bar, i.e. get rid of their stuff. Get rid of their, you know, some people still have their pictures of their ex in their house, mm. all over their house, right? How is How are you going to have a guy over? Yeah. <laughs> how are you going to ever, that's just literally saying no. You know, it's like having a single bed, right? Like you're not, you're not ready. Mm. So you, you admit you have a problem. You remove the triggers. You set a time of no communication. I, this seems so obvious to me, but so many people are just still getting some goodies out of, you know, like I'm sure Courtney's getting some goodies out of these dates. Oh, right? she's, I think she's taking notes over there. She, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Keep going, Lori. I know you're helping one for sure. <laughs> it's, it's, it really is like snacking on a Snickers bar. Like you will be temporarily relieved of your hunger, but it's not good for you. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're going back for snacks where there's nothing there for you, but it keeps your appetite suppressed. So you're not going for what you really want. Mm -hmm. So you do need a time of no communication where you can detox, where you can literally go through the grieving process without re-triggering it mm -hmm. and, and smooth it out, right? And start to focus instead of on that person being your comfort refocus on something else being your comfort. It could be your spirituality. It could be your exercise. It could be your friendships. It could be a project mm -hmm. you started in service. It could be, please pick, pick and, and, and make many things the substitute for the goodies you're getting from going back to this person, either mentally or physically going back to the person or emotionally. Yeah. You need a sponsor. You need a coach or a therapist that you can admit, not blab to, not complain to, not cry to, but go, uh Oh, I'm doing it again. I want to drink. That's what mm -hmm. people do with their sponsor. I want to drink. What should I do? Well, what's going on? What's triggering you? Blah, 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 blah. Right. So you need a human you can call. That's what I do for my clients and say, I'm having the loop again. I'm thinking about him. I'm thinking I should have never left. I'm thinking he should have never left. And I go, okay, that's the loop we know. Did something mm -hmm. trigger you? Okay. What are you going to go do? I'm going to go knit a scarf and call my daughter. Cool. You're not mm -hmm. going to do the addiction. You're not going to do the bad habit. You're, and then if you do that enough times, if I like, it's still one day at a time. But if you do it enough times, it becomes your habit becomes recovery, not addiction. Interesting. A lot of people would say, well, what's the harm in maintaining touch? Or, you know, we only talk to each other once every in a while and I want to be nice and I don't want to have to totally extract somebody from my life. You know, what, what's the harm in maintaining some form of a friendship or contact? What would you say? 
so funny. I literally just coached a couple today because I coach couples too. And they were negotiating their rules on communication with exes. Uh -huh. I mean, it's very <laughs> clear. Everyone has a different set of rules and boundaries based on what yep. they observed in their parents, what happened to them in the past and what their sensitivities and triggers are. And so uh, I do believe there is room for communication with exes, especially if there is no longer a chance of anything ever happening and there's no longer attraction. If there mm -hmm. is still attraction, the best thing is for there to be no contact until something else takes your attention away. So there is a harm in it. The harm in it is that you're going to keep going back to something that's not good for you. And the mm -hmm. other harm in it is that it directly sends a message to your real one and only, your real soulmate, mm -hmm. that you're not available. Because right. the person who deserves you and is your person wants you single, <laughs> not unavailable, right? And so you really do need to be single and available in order for your soulmate to find you and vice versa. Yeah. Excellent point. Excellent Thanks. point. Okay. Yeah. Lori, an another, another thanks to our sponsors and on and on we go. Stay with us, everybody. All right. So let's catch our breath and talk about the air that we breathe. Did you know Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths a day? The indoor air that we breathe is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, up to 100 times more polluted, according to the EPA. So what's the solution here? Well, introducing an air purifier that captured the attention of major media outlets across the country. It's called Air Doctor. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% .99 of dangerous contaminants, so your lungs don't have to. That includes pollutants such as allergens, pollen, pet dander, dust mites, mold spores, even bacteria and viruses that can make us sick. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day breathe easy money back guarantee, so if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund minus shipping. Head to airdoctorpro.com, use promo code OVER50, and you'll receive up to $300 off air purifiers. Exclusive to podcast customers, you'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Lock this special offer by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com and use promo code OVER50. Today's podcast sponsored by Boncharge, science-backed wellness products to optimize your sleep, well-being, and recovery. Boncharge is a holistic wellness brand, and they've got a range of products from blue light glasses to infrared saunas, red light therapy, EMF management, and circadian friendly lighting. You've heard me talk about the red light face masks. They have become incredibly popular for helping to reduce fine lines and wrinkles to improve skin texture and the overall look and radiance of the skin. Only 10 to 20 minutes each day, so easy to use. Hey, who doesn't want to boost collagen and elastin production? And you've got a one year warranty. It feels great, and I absolutely love it. Boncharge.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. Welcome back. My guest today is the spirited Lori Gerber from LoriGerber.com. She's got a company called Lori Gerber Coaching, and she helps couples and individuals find love in life. Specifically, you enjoy this midlife space because it's such a unique and interesting space for us ladies in midlife and, and a lot of challenges uh, we present at this stage. But I will also say, and we've talked about the opportunities, and I love that because there is tremendous opportunity. You listed all of those before. Uh, we're not looking for oftentimes we don't need a man to support us. We're not looking for a man to father children with us. We're in a very different space in this stage in life. And it's, it's a joyful, fun, creative space to be able to find love and what that means now. And it plays out very differently. And that's super cool. I love that. It's true. It is. So we were going through kind of your list of, of things that you do to help individuals and couples. And we were just talking about, um, you know, the, the toxicity of love and the love detox that needs to happen in a lot of people's cases coming out of relationships and kind of severing that to be able to move forward and to be available. Um, I want to talk to you about the art of the first three dates. Okay, let's let's go because I think sometimes we just don't know what to do or what to look for. Yeah, I, this is purely tactical, right? I've talked okay. a lot about what you need to be ready to date. This is purely tactical. And this is 
my response to dating fatigue. This is my response to how overwhelming it seems to get back out into that world. And and I alluded to it a little bit in our first conversation from the very first segment when Courtney was here by saying, mm-hmm. you, you're limiting yourself to three dates to discover whether or not someone meets your criteria. And that's very important because natural human nature is once you start investing in something, you want to keep betting on that stock. So once you have four, five, six, seven dates, you want to you want to ignore the red flags. You want to mm-hmm. ignore what you're seeing isn't working and you want to keep going. So we are giving you this artificial requirement that forces you to be efficient and straightforward and clear about what you want and then ask the right interesting questions on the first three dates in order to determine whether the person meets your three H criteria and whether you meet their three H criteria. As a reminder, that's the head, the heart, and heart the and the hoo-ha. Yeah. You get three. <laughs> I'm a quick study. You get three. Okay. And the three is important. Let's go over that criteria again. I mean, how do we know when we need to nip it in the bud after day three? It's so simple. We're going to literally do a, a, a scale, scale of one to 10. 10 is like, oh my God, everything's green. All systems go. I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. That should scare you a little bit because that's not likely. Yeah. One is, oh my God, get me the heck out, right? If every, if it was ones across the board, you're not even meeting, right? You're yeah. not even getting together. So you have three dates to get sixes up to eights, basically, mm-hmm. right? You could start out who has great, but you don't know about heart. You haven't gotten to know the person or he looks great on paper and that's a nine, but I don't know if I'm attracted yet. I kind of have to see him in person. I kind of have to see how he fills out the suit. I kind of have to, you know, mm-hmm. so you get three dates to get from a six to an eight. And an I don't know is a 6.5, right? So an I don't know mm-hmm. is never gonna pass the test. You have to find out and that's what your three dates are for. If they are not all at eight or above on the third date, abort the mission. It's it, we, we make it quantitative, mm-hmm. not qualitative. Now, not everything is weighted the same, right? If a deal breaker turns red, if you discover they're an alcoholic or they smoke or they don't have mm-hmm. the leanings you like or whatever, that's a no, right? That's just a no, sorry, because yep. that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. And that's a nice thing to tell someone, sorry, it's a deal breaker for me. I don't work with people in tobacco or whatever, you know? Right. These are all real examples. <laughs> so so it becomes very simple when to abort the mission. Don't abort the mission until three dates in if, if the ratings are going up. Do abort the mission if who has below a six. Do abort the mission if a deal breaker turns red. But otherwise, you're using your three dates to be your best and put your foot forward because you you also want to meet their three H criteria and to determine if they meet yours. And then it's a no if they're not eight or above. Yeah. Lori, do a lot of people abort the mission on date one because all things aren't firing at once? Do we not give people maybe enough time or enough chance? Because look, I mean, first dates, people can be nervous in trying to present well. Not everybody is great at dating. I agree. I mean, I encourage my people, again, unless a deal breaker has turned red. So you have to talk about your deal breakers Yeah. or there's no hoo-ha, no chance of it. And you tried kissing him and you tried telling him to straighten his, like, unless those things you would, you would go for a second date, unless there's a deal breaker present or your ratings are going down from having talked to them on video, right? If they're offending you, if they're yeah. boring you to tears, if they're just not attractive to you in any possible way, shape or form. Again, I like you to vet that on the video date. Right. I mm. prefer you don't waste time, money, or mascara <laughs> on a live date. Or false lashes. <laughs> or, I, mean, <laughs> I would really prefer that if you're trying to avoid dating fatigue and you're trying to be as efficient mm. and productive as possible, you would you'd cover all your deal breakers on video. And if yeah. somebody if somebody's attracted to you and they're serious about finding their person, they are not offended by those questions because they don't mm-hmm. want to make waste their money and time either. Right. So you're weeding people out by asking for a video date because if they're not serious or they just want to have sex with you, they'll we, they'll weed themselves out. Totally. And it just it hits the gas. It accelerates things because what you would have fit in in maybe two people in a week, if you're doing all of this kind of preliminary stuff, video conferencing, and you decide, you know what, you're not my person, well, then you open yourself up for possibly the next day or the next day. So it ups your chances of being able to find somebody just by going through that exercise. Right pure math. It's pure math. It is. And it's karma to set people free quickly. And to and then nobody's mm. offended if you've only had a video date and you're like, I'm sorry, I don't feel the connection. Yeah. Nobody's offended. They haven't invested in you. They haven't bought you dinner. They haven't sent you love poetry yet. Right. It's, it's just, sorry, it's not a match. It's not. Yeah. It's okay. 
Good point. Good point. The, these are so good. The next one that you write, and I'm so intrigued by what you mean by this. It says when not to settle and when to settle. What do you mean by that? Right, right. Um, so again, I think I, I could drill this point home forever and people will still ignore it. <laughs> do not settle for under an eight in any of the criteria, right? Mm -hmm. Just, but that doesn't mean don't do the work to get to an eight or above. So I have a great story, wonderful woman over 50, never found the love of her life, dated throughout her entire life, but never found her person, mm -hmm. hired me to help her sort it out and deal with her past and her lineage and make all her rules. And she meets a guy and she's got some strict criteria, right? He's gotta be mm -hmm. successful. He's gotta clean up nice. He's gotta, you know, he's gotta love excessive amounts of exercise, for example. Right. So there there was some this was this was a bit of I call it a thimble in a haystack. It's not sure. a haystack, it's a thimble in a haystack. You can't find it, but you have to look. And she finds the guy and he is perfect on paper. He is loving her. He's doting on her. He's wants to have all the honest conversations. He wants to mm. talk about everything. There's just there's just one problem. She's not into his love. She's like, he's a handsome man, but he's like, he hasn't updated his wardrobe since he got married. And that was mm -hmm. five years ago. And I was like, okay, honey, he's getting a makeover. Like, go, go do it. Right. <laughs> go do it. And she literally, and, and she was like, okay, I have to tell you this thing. It's so embarrassing. I really like you. I'm enjoying getting to know you. It's been three dates now. We're really, this is really nice. I think we have so much in common. This is amazing. We could really be good partners. I have to tell you this embarrassing thing. I'm I'm judging your wardrobe. Like I'm very fashionable. I'm into how I'm just into it. And it turns me mm -hmm. on so much when a guy has this certain kind of style. And yeah. he's like, Thank God you said something. My daughters have been telling me. And I know I have a capacity for this. I'm an I don't I haven't dated in 20 years. Help me, please. Right. And she's like, Okay, we're gonna go to these three stores and we're gonna give me up. Gonna, and he looks great. And she dresses him and she's mm -hmm. like, handle that. So it, you're not allowed to give up on something that's changeable, mm -hmm. right? If, if some things are not changeable. If he has kids and you don't want to deal with someone with kids, if he's got a heart problem and you don't want to deal with a heart problem, if he's got whatever, right? I, I'm not saying, again, that's when not to settle, right? Mm -hmm. When he's got something that's a deal breaker for you, don't settle. But when he's got something that could be changed, you know, try kissing. Try talking about it. Those are the two things, right? Try kissing, try talking about it. And that goes for issues of the heart and the head as well, mm. right? Because if I had said, well, you're not Jewish, it would have been over on the first date. But we we talked about it, right? Like, right. and I explore, well, what do I care about? Well, would you let me raise the kids Jewish? Sure. In New York? Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're back on, you know, you're back in the running. So, okay, so what, what would you have said to your, your friend, client, um, if she had gone to him and said, mm, I love, I'm loving everything about you, but, but your style just isn't jiving with me. What if he said, well, this is who I am. I like right. this style. What then? Because he's still well, registering an eight in very critical areas, but now is it superficial or what is it? Okay. So the other thing I've noticed is that sometimes when you bring something up with someone and they stick up for themselves, you then are turned on by the fact they stuck up for themselves. Hmm. I have another story of a woman who told the guy, I, I can't even remember. I think it was his teeth, you know, were messed up, right? And he needed to fix his teeth. And one other thing, and I'll tell you yet another story. Anyway, he was like, <laughs> he was like, F you, right? Like you're shallow. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. This is my choice. And she was like, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> but she just backed right off. She, and I, and I remember I used to complain to my husband about certain behaviors he had that were a turnoff to me. And he was just like, get over it. <laughs> just mm. get over it. And so, and I did. And and I actually thought it was sexy of him to tell me to get over it. So that's interesting. A so is that what you mean when you say when to settle? Right. So when okay. you can settle as long as you can get it up to an eight, but I'm saying don't think you know until you've tried everything. So right. that's when people leave too early, to your point. Mm. Sometimes Day too late when a deal breaker is read. Sometimes people leave too early because they don't try to get it up to an eight. They don't give it a chance to get up to an eight. And a lot of people who find the love of their life say, I wasn't attracted at first, or I didn't think I wasn't impressed by the job first, or I wasn't, I didn't think I liked that body type, or right. I mm -hmm. thought blonde hair and blue eyed, right? And Jew and Jewish. <laughs> right. Surprise. You know, surprise. It wasn't true. So 
you have to you have to actually do the work to get it up to an eight. Not one more example. Mm-hmm. She meets the guy, everything's great. He's overweight, right? Like he's mm-hmm. overweight. She's so fit. She's so into being fit. She's like, I'm so embarrassed. I just have to say, you know, everything about this I like. This one thing is just, it's like getting my gut. You know, you say it really nicely. Mm-hmm. I I have to tell you something, right? <laughs> you know, I was in a traumatic car accident about six months ago. I'm usually in triathlons. I'm I train. I'm in peak physical condition. This injury took me out of the game and I'm only just getting back. Like I, yeah. I really haven't even been back. And you're just catching me. This is actually not my body. <laughs> and then it was true. Like I saw him a few months later and I was like, Whoa. How in shape he was. So it just wasn't, but again, if she didn't say anything, yeah. Why is he going to tell her that story? He's not going to bring that up in the first three dates necessarily, unless you say, Hey, I'm having a thought, which is, is the whole honesty rubric I'm trying to teach people say, Hey, I have a thought, say it really nicely. Don't be a jerk about it. Say it really nicely. Take ownership Mm -hmm. or bias, and then let someone rise to the occasion of explaining it. They may become so much sexier in that conversation. Now, Lori, what if he may have poor eating habits and just be fine the way he is? Is that something that she should settle with or? You're going to fix it. What are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to fix it for him, or you're going to be turned on by the fact he doesn't care and truly let it go. Or you're going to have an irreconcilable difference. Mm. So, you know, I can handle my husband hawking loogies. I can handle him (laughs) snoring. I cannot handle him becoming obese, right? There's just certain things I can handle and certain things I can't handle. Mm -hmm. And this is another great thing Evan said, which is it's how you handle each other's liabilities. Mm -hmm. That's what determines your success. It's not really about the height and the weight and the, all that. It's like, what are you good with each other's weaknesses? Are are you okay with the phlegm and the snoring and the restless leg and the irritable bowel and the, (laughs) everyone seven things are you they're not offended by okay with or charmed by their seven things yeah yeah it's true i mean there's no such thing as a perfect 10 in every category so we do have to overlook and by the way people are overlooking things in us too so there's that seven each right so you right your, your three dates are to find out what those seven things are and whether or not you're offended by them yeah yeah okay so one thing we talked about briefly when courtney was here was determining your true type (laughs) let's expand on that one shall we it's really simple it's just ignore what you like ignore your first pass at the question right just Mm -hmm. ignore it because the first pass of your question is going to be your dad whatever teen star you know i think i watched what was that movie Oh my God, I can't, desert something. There was like some movie right in that moment of my childhood where the guy was the blonde guy in the bl- blue eyes. Right. And it's imprinted on me, right? We get imprinted by our family and by the media and whatever we were exposed to. And then we think that's, we don't question it again. Just like mm. I don't question raising my kids Jewish. So <laughs> we get imprinted. So ignore your first pass and then go one by one through your supposed criteria and go, why do I care? Why do I care? Why do I care? Why do I care? Until you get to the real answer, because why do I care? Jewish was, it's nothing to do with Judaism. <laughs> I'm not faithful right. it's nothing to do with the religion. <laughs> I wanted my kids to do Passover. <laughs> that's it. Like that's it. I wanted my traditions and I wanted to be able to carry those traditions on for my family. Right. Most whom died in the Holocaust, right? That That's mm-hmm. it. It was a romantic personal notion. It was not about sure. Judaism. So I want you to determine your true type by asking yourself, why do I care? Why do I care? Why do I care? And then that list is your true type. Got it. Well, well I'm determined to have my George Michael. So I'm just going to say that. <laughs> what did you do? He, I- well, I'm really, I, yes, he was gay and now he's dead, but I love him as a type. So <laughs> you're looking for <laughs> you might need to talk about your true type. The other thing is, if I love my type. type. <laughs> then your true type is single. <laughs> the other the other thing about true type is if your true type is a dick, right? If you're only attracted to someone who treats you badly, you have to change your type. Mm. That's, that's not your type. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that is again, that is like a, a patterned response to something from your childhood that is not mm. your actual type. 
So yep. I used to think my type of food was bagels and cinnamon rolls. Mm -hmm. That was what I liked. Okay. And it took me having to learn how to make a decent salad and some roasted vegetables for me to understand that is actually my type of food. Because it not only looks good, it feels good. And the mm -hmm. analogy is perfect because if you're falling for someone who's all hoo-ha and no heart, that's not your actual type. That's you ignoring a whole third of your humanity. Right? Yeah, no, I, I love that. And you're right. We gravitate to what we know and what feels comfortable. And that generally comes from our past. And there's a lot of analysis that comes in that. Exactly. Cinnamon rolls. That is my type. Mm -hmm. That is what my lineage taught me. But that is only satisfying my hoo-ha. That is not yep. satisfying my heart or my head. I love it. This is so applicable and relatable. This is so good. Okay. So we talked about online dating and you talk about how to meet people in real life. You gave the example of the one woman who met her man in the New York city street. So what do you do? You just like, you pick the guy who registers, you know, on your radar and you just go up and say, Hey, you know, my, my head, my heart, and my hoo-ha are firing all at once here. What do you do? Well, it will only be hoo-ha unless the person <laughs> does something very gallant for you. <laughs> That's true. And he may. And he may. I mean, the first, the first point I'll make again is that your person is everywhere and could be anywhere. So stop pretending that's not true. That's the first thing. Because if you are broadcasting, he doesn't exist, you will find evidence of that. If yeah. you are broadcasting, he's everywhere, you'll find evidence of that. So you have to think that, then you have to look up and look around and make eye contact with humans. That's like the dumbest, simplest, true coaching. You have to make eye contact at the grocery line. You have to make eye contact at parties. You have to make eye contact at tennis. You have to make eye contact at pickleball. You have to make eye contact at church or synagogue. You have to make eye contact with humans and smile. And mm -hmm. that's really it. Like the next level is if you're good at that, first get good at that. If you're good at that, then you have to learn how to flirt. Oh, right. I like your shirt. It's not that complicated. <laughs> you come here often. I like your shirt. Are you with anybody? What brought you here today? And mm -hmm. again, you need your canned answers. So you're not flustered. You have seven things you could say to a new human. Right. And it easily, if they like you and you like them hoo-ha wise, that conversation will take off and it will go. And you'll start to ask your three H questions. Mm -hmm. The first of which being like, oh, are you single? Do you like dogs? <laughs> these are, Cause I got a these cutie. Are, these are hard <laughs> questions, guys. They're not hard. Right. So, well, and you also have to get out of the house because this isn't going to happen if you're inside all the time. So you need to go to restaurants, churches, synagogues, places where people congregate to be able to expose yourself. For, and don't pretend like they don't exist. Come on. People fell mm -hmm. in love in COVID. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so there. You can meet humans. And oh, if you don't meet humans in real life, you can look at the billions online if you'd like instead. That's true. And and find one there. Okay. This is good. Um, this one really resonates with me. The laws of effective communication. Ooh, and you know what? This is for whether you're trying to find love or you have had somebody in your life for a long time. I'll tell you what, communication is in my book, number one. It's true. It's the make or break. It so is. I think overall, some people err too far on the side of grace. In other words, they are they care about not offending or hurting someone's feelings so they don't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And some people err too far on the side of wisdom. They're steamrollers, they're bulldo bulldozers, they'll talk the entire time at the date, you know, they'll they'll just be boss, you know, they're 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 jerks, right? They're they're bulls in China shop. They they dominate, yeah. So, yeah, they dominate. So you're somewhere on that scale. Most people do not strike a balance. So I give people the eight steps of a difficult conversation that balances the grace and the wisdom. Obviously, you want to bring that ethos to all your conversations in, in life so that you become someone who is uh, thought of as kind and also mm -hmm. someone who is thought of as authentic and telling the truth. Um, in a relationship, when there is something awkward to talk about, whether it's like, oh, I'm not attracted to this thing, or I don't want a second date, or I really don't like Italian, or the music's too loud for me in here, or, you know, we need to talk about sexually transmitted diseases, you know, whatever the awkward topic is, you have to ask permission first, or it's an ambush. Mm -hmm. And we're all talking about consent, but consent goes for conversations as well as anything else. And it's a really smart idea to say, is now a good time? Can we talk about blah, blah? Because uh -huh. then not only do you get, not only are you respecting that person to make mm -hmm. that choice, but you are then getting the invitation if they say yes. And so it's, yes. it's comforting for both parties. 
It's grace yeah. for both of you in a sense. Well, Not you're really great. teeing it up as well for success to have that conversation. And timing, as they say, is everything. And people have to be open and receptive. And you're right. There's nothing worse than being ambushed at a time when maybe you've had a long day, you're not feeling great, you, you might be you know, hit on the defensive. So I, I really love, and again, it boils down to respect. And is this the right time to discuss this? Now that we know that there's there's a time to say, okay, let's let's embark in this discussion or whatnot. Let's talk about honesty in relationships because I think, Lori, far too often people are so afraid of hurting the other person's feelings or being seen in a poor light that they either withhold information or they misconstrue it. Honesty is everything. Truth is everything, isn't it? Yeah. How are you ever going to feel loved if it's not you that's actually right. there? Right. <laughs> right. And we're not taught it. We're, in fact, we're modeled yeah. by our parents and everyone in society to BS and to, to send out a PR agent to represent yeah. us, and meet the other PR agents and see if we like each other's BS version. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is radical to break out of it. And I think that, I think this is where it comes in handy to have a coach or a therapist or even mm -hmm. a friend group. And in my coaching courses, we have a group, we have a cohort, we have friends who, you know, become friends, but a group of people who can reflect to each other because you need to practice. You need to run it through because what we, the first thing we do is we're judgmental and we think we're right. Like the mm -hmm. first pass at a communication isn't usually that graceful. I, I have one client who, who has to tell people he has herpes, right? And I'm sure that the first seven times he did it did not go well. Right. Right. Until he learned like, oh, what do people need to hear about this in order to feel comfortable? And so he learned and he put together his elevator pitch for why you should still have sex with me and kiss me. <laughs> and he he died like he he got it great. Right. So nine out of 10 times that conversation goes great and it builds intimacy. One out of 10, the girl can't handle it. It's one of her deal breakers and she's out. Right. So, But the point is he took the time to think about what was really behind the concern versus bleh, right? And so mm -hmm. that's, if you're gonna be honest, you're gonna have to take the time to grace it up, right? You're not, I'm not saying think every thought you have and say it out loud. Mm -hmm. not, God forbid we all just said every thought we had out loud. Yeah, First that could be disastrous. Time, yeah, we don't have time. And second of all, most of what we think is garbage. Right, that's true. Really? So that's you, or, is, or is an emotional reaction to something that really doesn't need to be said. It needs to be exactly. processed. Exactly. So we have writing exercises. We have the the community to bounce things off of until you can say something in such a way. And you can tell by some of the examples I gave that my daters are speaking in a kind and intelligent and connected way. So everyone leaves on higher ground, mm -hmm. even if it's not a match. And that's the worst that can happen. But that's not truly the worst that can happen because that makes you available for your actual person. That's right. And it makes you more available for you because you have a better understanding of who you are and what your boundaries are. I, I, I could talk with you for hours. If, if my viewers want to find you, they can go to lauriegerber.com. Where, where else can they find you? What, what else are you doing? I'm sure you're on social media. You're everywhere. I'm on some social media. Uh, we can give them a link to the private Facebook group, which is okay. a free you know, place to interact with other people on this exact journey. Uh, we have the course, which is very affordable, and that's kind of like working through the steps on your own, but meeting in group coaching with me. Mm -hmm. um, I do take private clients. LoriGerber.com will tell you all of that and everything that you, and give you all the links to the quiz and the and the masterclass and and all the free stuff as well as the paid stuff. And then Instagram, LoriGerber underscore coach. Perfect. We will provide all your links and make you available to everybody and anybody who would like to use you as a resource and just get more information and to be better informed and better educated and have a better perspective about how to approach this and how to have great relationships. Lori, I am so glad you were on Over 50 and Flourishing today. You absolutely made my day. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So many takeaways from Lori and just what a wonderful, fresh perspective. I know Courtney was taking notes. I hope you were too. Any other thoughts for Over 50 and Flourishing in terms of content or guests or people who you would like to see on this platform? If you're watching on YouTube, just lay it out in the comment section for us below. We'll take a look and see what you have to say. Um, any personal thoughts on dating in midlife that you would like to share? I know this community really rallies when people speak 
their truth and they're authentic about what they're experiencing. And I really think that we can help others in this journey by doing that. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you're listening to this podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, we, we always ask to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Those things are so important to be able to help a podcast stay on platforms like these, to be able to grow, to reach new women. You know, I, I really want to broaden the conversation and loop a lot of women into these discussions to help us in midlife and really bring on great guests to open our eyes and our minds to new possibilities. Have a good day and I'll see you next week. Today's podcast sponsored by Bond Charge, science-backed wellness products to optimize your sleep, well-being, and recovery. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand, and they've got a range of products from blue light glasses to infrared saunas, red light therapy, EMF management, and circadian-friendly lighting. You've heard me talk about the red light face masks. They have become incredibly popular for helping to reduce fine lines and wrinkles to improve skin texture and the overall look and radiance of the skin. Only 10 to 20 minutes each day, so easy to use. Hey, who doesn't want to boost collagen and elastin production? And you've got a one-year warranty. It feels great and I absolutely love it. Bondcharge.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%.